Why are you trying to do things on your own? Hi, this is Pastor Chad Richardson, campus pastor of Celebration Church, Mandeville Covington Campus. Excited you've joined me this day for a time of devotion and praying that you'd press the share button right now so that others can join in with us as well. Why are you trying to do things on your own? Who's holding you up during these difficult days? Look, it's no secret that we live in difficult times. We're reminded of it every time we turn on the news, whether it be on the TV, the newspaper, the cell phones, or the internet, we find constantly how difficult days we are. You have to have your head in the sand to realize, uh, to not be able to realize that we live in difficult days. I mean, economy, it's tough. Even though we've got great numbers on the stock market, uh, we see them going up and down, up and down, up and down. Now they're talking about doing another correction again. Uh, we see uh, companies one in five in our area talking about being closed in the next few months. Uh, we see COVID-19 and sickness that's still going around the world. Uh, we see uh, justices taking place in all different forms all around the world, all around society. We see uh, we see in some states in America, the church is shut down and told they can't meet from being fined anytime they try. Look, we live in difficult times. We cannot deny that fact. But here's the here's the situation that really bothers me is the fact that we understand how difficult it is, yet we still strive to do things on our own without any help, employing anyone to walk alongside of us. And here's what that does. It sets us up for failure. Why? Because God did not design you or I to live our life in our own terms on our own. He desired us and designed us to be in relationship not only with him, but also with others. We're to employ his help and to employ other people's help, both and, not one or. It is both and. And here's the deal. We see an example of that in the book of Exodus, chapter 17, beginning in verse 10. It says this, And Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Elimelech. Uh, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. They took a stone, uh, then they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Thus his hands were steady until the sun set. And so Joshua overwhelmed Elimelech and his people with the edge of the sword. You see what's happening in that story? As long as Moses was trying to do it on his own, Israel would lose. They would fail. Elimelech would overtake them. But as long as he was able to hold his hands up, they were able to win. And what happened? Uh, uh, Aaron and Hur pulled a stone for him to sit on so he could rest and out of stand. And then one got on one side, one got on the other. And they both together helped Aaron hold his, I mean, uh, help Moses hold his hands up so that Israel would prevail. And Israel won the battle. What is the lesson we learned in that? Is that even as great and awesome as Moses was, Moses was never given permission by God or given the strength by God to do things on his own in his own strength. He had to employ others. Even his father-in-law got involved and told him when he saw Moses trying to counsel thousands upon thousands of people every day. And his father-in-law said, you can't do this. This is not sustainable. He was exactly right. God did not wire us to be sustainable in our own strength. He required us to have his strength and requires to have others help in order to be able to accomplish the mission that God has set for you and I. So what is it that you are trying to do on your own? And you recognize right now you're stumbling, you're bumbling, you're failing. You're falling flat on your face constantly. And yet you, and I have been my time too, have been so stubborn not to reach out and allow other people to come alongside us. Look, I've been so stubborn in my life that I've busted my nose flat on the concrete, not literally, but metaphorically. I've, I've, I've busted my nose flat on the concrete because I refuse to let other people come along and help me because I said I can do it on my own. And you know what? God said, fine, Chad, you want to do it that way, then you're going to fail. And you know what would happen? Boom, I would fail. Why? Because God said, I want to help you and I want others to help you. That's what it means to be the body. That's what it means to be in connection and relationship to God. You see, that cross, we say it often has a vertical and a horizontal beam. The horizontal or vertical is our relationship with him. The horizontal is our relationship with others. And without one or the other, you don't have a cross. Without one or the other, it's not a it's not a one or the other, it's a both and. We're required to have our relationship with God and our relationship with others because all of them together is where we draw our strength to be able to accomplish all that we need to do. God never set for you to do it alone. And I promise you, if you're trying right now, I wanna give you a prophecy, you will fail. But God says, I want you to have victory. I want to bring an Aaron and a Hur along in your life that'll slide a stone under your rear so you can have a seat and also come alongside on both hands so that they can hold you up and you will succeed. 
God wants you to succeed. God wants you to prosper. But you've got to let others come in your life. And you've got to let God work in your life in order to succeed, in order to prosper. So are you still trying to go at it alone? Are you being convinced in your mind that you need to open up and let others in? I hope so. Because God wants you to have success. And that's the only way that you will. Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that you have designed us that we aren't meant to do things alone, but instead we are to employ others to help us. I thank you, God, that you don't leave us alone, that you say you never leave us nor forsake us. So, God, we not only have you in our life, we also have others that are believers in our lives to help us walk through this life together. We're not going it alone, and when we, when we try to go alone, we will fail, but, God, you have made a way for us to succeed. You have made a way for us to prosper in this life if we just follow your plan of action. And so, God, may we have people like Aaron and her as Moses had in his life, to hold our hands up so that we will not fail, but instead we will find success. And God, I pray today for that one that has been struggling in their finances, has been struggling in their marriage, has been struggling in their job, has been struggling in their health. God, they're struggling uh, in all kinds of situations that today they would open up and allow others in, allow you to do a great work in their life. In Jesus' name, we pray for victory right now in someone's life listening today. Father, we pray for victory in someone's life that has, has known nothing but failure because they've tried to do it in their own strength. We pray, God, that they would see you and see the victory that you have already done in other people's lives, that you've already done on the cross of Calvary, you've done on the tomb, you've done victory over victory over victory, God, throughout the word. God, may they see that and, and be encouraged to know that they will have victory too if they just learn to trust in you and your plan for their lives. Father, I pray that we would surrender ourselves to you today, that, God, we would say, I surrender. I can't do it. That God, we would stop trying to do it on our own. That God, we would surrender so that we can experience your best. And Father, I pray today that you would be glorified through our lives, that in all that we say and do, you would be glorified. And we pray that you would touch the world, God, that, that you would touch the world and bring about healing of this COVID-19. Father God, that you would help rise up and help overcome some of the injustices that, we, that we're dealing with. May the church be the answer to these situations, God, because we have the singular answer and his name is Jesus. May we be faithful to teach and preach Jesus in the world and show Christ in all that we say and do. So, Father, the world may find healing as we have known healing by the touch of Jesus in our life. And, Father, we thank you so much for loving us and so much that while we were in our sin, you sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. And, Father, I thank you that you rose him from the dead. And I pray for that person today that does not have a relationship with Jesus, that they would open up and say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that I'm separated from you. I invite Jesus to come into my life to forgive me of all of my sin and to be the master and savior of my life. Help me, Lord, to walk in your ways and live by your truth. In Jesus' name. God, may that be the prayer of someone's heart today. May today they be able to claim salvation in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that the church may rise and be the difference makers in the world around us. Father, the church will no longer be silent. The church will no longer sit on their hands. But the church may rise and be all that you've called her to be. Father, your bride and your voice, your light, your salt in this earth. God, I thank you so much for your grace and mercy that we do not deserve. But you gave it anyway. Your love was amazing and is amazing and will always be amazing. And Father, I pray that we would live in your power to point people to you. I give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching today. Press share so that others can watch too. God bless.